So they need to be reminded. We'll go through that. However, our conversation for tonight, if you are bi or multilingual, you'll be interested in this. How many languages can you speak proficiently? Is the conversation, but we're challenging a position. I don't know whether this is true or false. Something along the lines of intelligence connected to the number of languages that you can speak. Mm. Bi or multilingual people are considered smarter yeah. than those who can speak fewer languages. Is this true or false? I don't know what position Josiah will hold, but considering his linguistic conviction, his background <laughs> and all of that, I think he would very likely tell you that that is the case. So if you can speak only one language, you might not measure up in the scheme of things intellectually. But hey, we'll get there. So just uh, remind us once again, what is endoglossophobia? Yeah, endoglossophobia. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, so you know I've been talking about this this um, term for some time now, and I'll keep talking about it until everybody gets to know it. Endoglossophobia, in the simplest form, is the fear of speaking one's own indigenous language. So you are afraid of speaking your own indigenous language or your own native language or what we will call the mother tongue, right? So you are afraid of speaking it. But in the broader form, is actually the anxiety. So when someone has anxiety, okay, when someone um, is afraid, when someone has um, shivers, mm. when you hear the sound, like last time in the show, somebody called and said, um, uh, whenever they speak, they have, it's a mother tongue. That that's that's how it sounds in his ear, mm. and because of that, he doesn't really like it, mm. right? So that kind of person is having endoglossophobia. Right. Yeah, but there is something I didn't touch last last time we spoke about it, um, yeah, because yeah. of the time I. Okay. For other issues of fear, all right, it's basically could be because of health challenges, and some of them could be because of maybe emotional. But for endoglossophobia, it's more psychological, basically more psychological. And then emotional also comes in. Okay. Now, psychological in the sense that um, there will be some misconception, maybe a part of the language, and that misconception, you've grown with it. And because of that, you don't um, want to associate yourself with the language. And emotional, again, uh, okay, let me give you an instance. Somebody called again last time and was like, whenever the mother wants to speak the language, she always, always uses it. Whenever. Oh, she's angry. <laughs> she's angry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the lady. Yeah. Uh, when she was uh, supposed to like, shut on her, beat her or something. So yeah. she feels the language now is all about the violence. She associated the, the language to anger. Anger, exactly. Yeah. And that made her to be afraid. So it means that even when I come over and speak the language in the normal form, it rings somehow in her, in her mind that it might get to that level of anger. <laughs> so you see, that also happens, and that causes endoglossophobia. Yeah. You begin to be afraid of speaking your own indigenous language. And this is, this is another thing again, if you hate your people. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. So if you have endophobia, endophobia okay. is the fear of your own native people. Okay. Um, so if you have that, you also likely will lead to endoglossophobia. Yeah, so this this is the thing. And the reason why I'm saying this is because over the years it's been existing, it's been having um we've been having issues when it comes to um endoglossophobia mm. around I've said the word, yeah, because a Chinese guy also said something that he's afraid of speaking his own um uh, mandarin. Okay, so it's not peculiar to Nigeria or Africa because you will say they have um, a lot of languages. No, uh, it's not peculiar to people that have a lot of languages. It's actually a universal problem. And that's why this word, there is no term at the time that was used to capture that situation. And that's why on this show, two weeks ago, 27 July, if I'm not if I'm right, yeah. 
we first of all launched oh that goodness. particular word, endoglossophobia. And of course, my right man, Sam, was present. So I won't deny that. You know what <laughs> is basically trying to fill in the data that will make up the Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> if it is eventually adopted. Uh, right? When, but when you see a person deal with stats, statistics to great detail, say on the 27th of January 2000 and this one, you say, no, this one is going somewhere. It is becoming academic for all the right reasons. All right? So a couple of reasons mentioned what a person would be Apprehensive, mm -hmm. would have anxiety, anxiety, yeah, would have a fear, yeah, anger towards their own people and their language, and I need to say this as many times as possible because you might be tuning in just now. Maybe you didn't join at the beginning. The word is not official yet. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not official yet. Yeah, so, we are working towards making it official. Yes, indeed. So Josiah is doing as much as he can to um, raise awareness. Now, if you if you don't understand how um, what's added to a dictionary? It basically is based on usage. Uh -huh, uh -huh. If a lot of people start using a word, uh, the forces that be will have no choice. True. You know, but to adopt it as this. That means, and as crazy as this might seem, if everybody starts to call, let me see, school rat, uh -huh, uh -huh. right? You go into a country and they say, oh, my child went to the rat. And like, what's the rat? And everybody, people continue to use it. You know, when the next version of the dictionary that captures English spoken in that region is 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 updated, one of the meanings of rat will be an institution of learning. So Josiah is trying to make you adopt his word. Do you want to get on board? It depends. What if we make him pay? <laughs> <laughs> so if you want me to join you on this. Just send money to this account. I, I, and it's, it's funny, actually, Sam, what you just said is is um, interesting you brought it up because we I had such situation recently. I'm not going to mention the name of this thing. So I, I got in contact with um, one of the papers, notable papers, right. and sent him the materials which he went through. Whether he went through or not, I don't know, because it sounded like he didn't go through but like uh, that you will go through it. I said, but I sent it to you. And then the next thing was like, uh, it's um, not publishable. And I'm like, I don't understand what you mean it's not publishable. He said, um, we'll do news. I said, but I know you also have column yeah. where you pick up um, things like this, opinions of people and you drop. And, yeah, yeah. and he was like, um... The thing is, with the situation of things right now, uh, the things like this are being paid for. Okay. And I'm like, I'm, I'm surprised you're saying this because a Nigerian is trying to push something that is new, which Nigerians are supposed to help and do it, which is, which is obtainable, you know, over the Western countries, mm -hmm. and you see them making waves. I like that he knows. So I literally now asked him, so what's, what's the price if I actually want to do that? Mm -hmm. You know what he told me? Tell me. Tell me. 150,000 Naira oh to publish endoglossophobia, mm -hmm. a two-page or less than three-page um, this thing. Mm -hmm. Now, my, my, my issue is not the fact that um, he said it's a paid thing. My issue is the fact that there's that lag in trying to show interest that, okay, somebody's trying to do something mm. that is is notable, and then there should be that hand helping the person to do it. There's nothing but it's okay, look, you know, we have to pay salaries and X, Y, Z, but I could talk to my editor and see if maybe you could get certain amount and i was okay that's fine one of the things that made um he, he the, um got to did what she did basically was the support she got you know um well so here's the thing right i understand where you're coming from you know i would not say i agree with you but i understand understanding is one thing while i get why this is important 
it's a cause that you're championing, right? You would like as much support as possible. Two things you need to understand is one, you have to, I don't know what, what publication that is. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't tell for very obvious reasons. You have to understand the editorial policy of that establishment. Yeah. Right? How they do their things, whether or not it's something they're okay running. And it really is a question of interest. It really doesn't have a lot to do with the cause or the interest and agenda of the organization. Yeah, right? that I will, I will agree yeah. also. But. For example, right here on Nigerian Group, this is a media organization. We have, as I like to say, conversations that matter, talking for development. But when we, in production, right, while preparing what to talk about, sometimes you have a lot of conversations and there are times where you say, okay, pick this one. Don't pick this Don't other pick this one. one. Yeah. Now, if these stories were connected to people, obviously the one that you have refused to pick, the person could decide to react in a certain way and say, well, Nigerian food doesn't really... And yes, it's, it's okay that you feel that way, but, you know, the reasons are valid. It could be that the story is not complete yet. It's a developing story. Right now, where we are and the direction we are headed, this might not, you know... So there are lots of valid reasons why that may be the case. Secondly, if it's um, a situation where the guy is saying, no, you need to pay for this. Okay, I'll just give this particular thought to myself. Because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no way I'll say it to, 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 to come up with. But I need you to understand that he reserves the right to either accept... No, no yeah, see, I, under, I understand that, of course, everybody deserves the right to either accept or reject, right? But I, I also think that when we want to um, do something, mm -hmm. then we should also look at... Fine, one of the reasons we have the human face in, in journalism or the, is because we also want to help situations and one of the why i'm bringing this up or why i decided to bring this up is the fact that when it comes to language issues a lot of media houses a lot of persons now i'm not um making it look like media houses don't talk about language no but a lot of media houses and a lot of persons don't see it as um as important they don't see it as something that they should carry. Mm. They don't see it as something that has weight. In fact, let me put it this way. They, they don't see it as something that um, sells because it's not political, because it's not... Um, I, I don't even go faster. No, it doesn't see, have to. It, I, I get where you're coming uh, from. Because it's, they see it like it's not um, a human story. And that's, that's what we should stop. Language issues that somebody is not speaking his own indigenous language is a human story. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> right. uh, we're, we're moving away a bit from the language conversation to, to policy issues, right? So that something is not sellable, right? That something is not marketable at a particular time does not mean that it's not important or relevant. Mm. It just means it has not been packaged properly. Okay. Right? Yeah. I was listening to someone who was talking about talents that end up badly. So you have people who have the talent. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that understand the music. You have people who get paid from the talent. Those are the people that understand music business. Mm -hmm. While it might seem like the ability to sing well, have a good voice, will be enough to feed you. No. Singing well and having a good voice shows that you are talented. You are talented, yeah. The monetization of it is the business end. Yeah. So you can only sell what you package properly. Mm -hmm. So now, Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, sir. So if yeah. we have... Yeah, go ahead. Raw material yeah. in our community. Yeah. Of course, we are blessed. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know what to do with it, if we don't know what industries that that resource can be, we 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 we, ha we don't understand how to convert what we have mm -hmm. to money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but see now, look at two reactions, Sam. I called you and I'm saying 
we were going to talk about endoglossophobia. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time you've had, you, know, you literally was like, endoglosso what? And I, you know, I smiled at that time. Because even me that got the word endoglossophobia, mm -hmm. I, I, I told you the story. I actually was, for those that, were, that didn't know, I actually was praying. I just came into the office and I did my normal prayer. But somehow it became intense in the office. Like, yeah, seriously. An angel whispered to you. <laughs> no, calm down. This an angel whispered to me. <laughs> so after the prayers and then I sat down to do the office work. That was when, I, I don't know what pushed me to just start typing some stuff on language. And then xenoglossophobia popped up. And that caught my interest in researching further. When I discovered this gap that there is no term for this kind of situation where people are afraid of speaking their own language. Yeah. Now, I have to go further to say, okay, I'm, is it true that there is no term? So I decided to put indoglossophobia, which is I-N-D-O, mm -hmm. and found out that indoglossophobia is already a suggestion right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, for uh, the fear of the Indians. Oh. Yeah. It's already a suggestion right now for the fear of the Indians. And also, um, endophobia. Hold on. Why would anybody be scared of the Indians? Well, <laughs> you don't watch Bollywood? What is, what is wrong with Endophobia? <laughs> <laughs> then I, I went and I was like, okay, what about endophobia? Then I found out that it's occupy. But in endophobia, it's not with the PH. It's actually with the FO now. Mm. Right. So that's when I, I just had the voice. Why not try endoglossophobia? Since endo means me, yeah. and then glosso is speaking, phobia is fear. So I had to type that. And I found out there was no record of it here on Google. So I didn't want to go like, ah, no, I have feeling what. I still had to like go to Google Scholar. To find out if it was true. Any articles, and any journal. Any article, any journal, journal any write-up, any yeah. even if it's just a word about it, and I didn't see. So that was how I'm like, okay, if that be the case, damn, this is it. Endoglossophobia. That's how that word came up. And when I told you, you were shocked, you were surprised, you were wondering, what's this? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm the exception to you. You can't use me as the example. No, I, I'm gone now. <laughs> <laughs> no, until we started the conversation. Uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. When we started it here, I, I remember how our listeners, you know, they were also, what's that? Mm -hmm. Until we started explaining. Yeah. And then the stories started coming. Now, the reaction is my issue. It's not that. It's not about the right. You had the right to say, Josiah, I don't understand that one. I don't know if our listeners can understand that. More could live and first, okay? You also had the right to say, okay, let's push it just the way we are doing now. So my my own is, and this is general, me speaking generally now, mm -hmm. Nigerians, we should have um, that, I don't know if I will call it sympathy if I have to. <laughs> you know? That's not the word you're looking for. Yeah, that's not the word sympathy I'm trying. No I'm trying to look for, I'm trying to look for a word, seriously. Mm -hmm. But we should just have that. Now, even if we don't want to accept a thing, show that, um, please, if you can borrow me an adjective, but just show that interest on that thing. That's okay. Be be because, be fine. Thank you. But because of X, Y, Z, this will not be accepted. Okay. So here's the thing, Josiah. And this is why the example you gave relating to you and I does not apply to the person you approach in print media. First of all, we already have a language show. Right? Yeah, we do. Exactly. So language health comes up every Wednesday on Let's Talk. It's already here. Whether we discuss endoglossophobia or not, we're going to have conversations around language. True. So it's easier for you to sell a language idea or concept because there is a program. And you still have to sell it, by the way. Yeah, of, of course. And right? I still have to sell it. Yeah, you still have to sell it, but it's <laughs> easier. As I'm selling it now. <laughs> First of all, there's familiarity, there's relationship, there's partnership. Yeah, there's right? partnership. There's all of that. It's like 
we have a family business. What's our family business? Agriculture. We already have land. We already plant. But there's something we don't grow. Yeah. And then I go to, of course, the head of the family because the family business say, hey, dad, why don't we start to grow this? It's going to be easier because, one, we're already in the industry. We already have land. But if I'm taking this to another person who is not on board at all, what do you think is sounding strange? Exactly. <laughs> right? So first of all, the person has to consider. In our publication, do we even have a column to address language issues first? Fantastic. You're coming to something. No, wait, now, wait. I'll go ahead. Wait. Right? <laughs> do we even have that? That's the first question. Two, are we willing to begin? Uh, okay. He is taking the greater risk. Mm -hmm. We have studied language health already. This yeah. show is like four or five years. Five years, years, August. Exactly. So Jude has been on it. So yeah. I think I Dennis thought, came in. Done maybe one year or plus. I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, this is this is a system. It's rolling. This other guy, you're literally telling him to turn on the ignition. He has to start something. <laughs> right? So whether or not you like it, it takes more energy on his part. Because for a new program to start in on whatever platform, social media, print, there has to be some analysis. Mm. Okay, who's our target audience? Can we keep this running for? So if this guy says, uh, not really, you have to, you really have to understand. Secondly, you have to sell it very well. And the way and you sell it to me yeah. might just be one mention. Hey, Sam, there's nothing for fear of speaking your own language. There's something for fear of Indians. There's something for fear of Chinese. There's something for fear of Igbo people. <laughs> but <laughs> fear of speaking your own language. And in my, <coughs> excuse me, regular curious nature, I'll be like, really, Josiah, are you serious? <laughs> and then, <coughs> sorry, then we'll have to observe for the next five or ten minutes. I'll be like, no, it's a lie, there's fear, no, there's no fear. And then, after everything, we'll now say, okay, let's see how we can have this conversation. But this guy, you're telling him, eh, okay, if he puts my this in for page seven, he'll say, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right? Who are you? Who, who where are you coming from? So, you have to do a greater job at selling it. As a matter of fact, any serious minded person should not even take what you're saying the first time you mention it. Yeah, and that's why um, we are doing it again and again now. Um, good thing. You see, we've gotten it published. Um, beyond my blog, I have um, two other online blogs yeah, that have published it. And I've also put it on my uh, academia. Okay, the first draft, I, put, I called it. Now, and good thing, Google now has recognized something about it. Yeah, there's an entry. Yeah, there's an entry. Mm. And and but basically the part of people using it, adopting it, adopting it. and that's why we have, I'm still talking about it, and I'll keep talking about it. <clears throat> and for those people that want to turn an ignition, turn it up very <laughs> well, because endoglossophobia is real, like. It is real. <laughs> I know, you see, it is my duty to either argue with you, ruin your plan, or tell you why something would not work, right? How many syllables are in the word endoglossophobia? How many what? Syllables. Endoglossophobia. Six. Yeah, that's six. That is a mouthful. Mouthful? No kidding. When you are having a um, um, uh, what child, what was that one we used to do in our secondary school days? So, um, why? I bet call, call and, and remind us. There are a lot of them. There are there are a lot of them. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'm not <laughs> saying that the word cannot be adopted, but if you're looking at everyday usage, yeah, people like to function from a position of convenience. Mm-hmm. Do you know that if you have endoglossophobia three times in one paragraph, it's already a problem? Maybe it could even be... Um, okay, okay, well, try your puzzle. Please call endoglossophobia. No, no. Endoglossophobia. <laughs> yeah. So that's another thing you... But it is adopted. But think of convenience. It said... Um, think of are, convenience. There are a lot of words. Give me an example. Uh, how many... Of a one day you like every day you say. Yes. No, but it was actually be like in every day. You need like, to make it if you <laughs> want it to be adopted. <laughs> That's the thing. That is, that that is it in every day you say? Even the people that put it in the they're not using it again. <laughs> <laughs> if you can bring the team <laughs> that, that made the dictionary better. And do actually means me. And then um, Gluso, of course, means speaking. 
okay. why phobia means fear now the thing is the root word is from greek because in any word you want to bring there mm -hmm. should be that etymological origin of it yeah. it should come from somewhere it comes from somewhere you don't just put up a word and hold on hold on yeah why did you consider upi mini <laughs> <laughs> it has to come from somewhere. No, why but, do you not think no, of your own language? So the thing is, now, why why is it is is simple? We already have an existing word called endophobia, okay. which actually means fear of indigenous people. Right. Fear of the people. Fear of the people. Okay. So fear of my own people. Alright. So it's now Simple to say, okay, if endophobia, which actually means the fear of my own people, is in existence, then what we need to do, and you have xenoglosso, which glosso actually means speaking, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's a simple thing to add the glosso to the already existing word. Yeah. So people now say, okay, so this word endoglossophobia actually came from endophobia. Okay. So it's, it's related. Okay, that's that's the thing. It's related. I have an idea. <laughs> what if we do endolinguaphobia? <laughs> now think about it yourself. It's easier to pronounce. <laughs> you guys should not mind, sir. Just Let listen. Let us help this word get adopted faster. <laughs> Just listen, me. Consider this idea, Josiah. You, you want to be stubborn. <laughs> In the, when we look back. <laughs> Okay, okay. All right. So, you know what? Our conversation today is about multilingualism. Yeah. I don't even know if we'll see that conversation because I think we are taking the entire show. Right? Commerce. Josiah is really looking for this word to get adopted. And if, if it does, it, nothing will please me more. And this is, this is how. You know, I, I don't want to be that person who sounds like everyone else. But if this were some researcher from any other part of the world, right? A lot of people will give credit and send credit to it, but it's just our Josiah. I just our yeah. Josiah, yeah. Maybe I our Josiah. <laughs> <laughs> Mega star Jack. <laughs> but, but, you know, say, but right, let's talk. Endoglossophobia. Is that a word that for you would be easy to work with? Do you see yourself using this in everyday conversation? And this third question is for me. Endoglossophobia or endolinguaphobia, which one is easier for you to pronounce? So, you know, maybe we can add our own. 0817923002. 0817923002. Who is this enemy of progress? Somebody has come on WhatsApp to say six syllable words in usage every day or today. Globalization, habitation now, contamination, autobiographic. Okay, so contamination is. I think the the most used here. Yeah. A lot of people don't use. I mean, these these words are familiar, everyday words. Everyday words. But I bet you, a lot of people will look for a substitute for globalization, right? If they have the word, and they could find a synonym of it, they will very likely head in the direction of the synonym. Contamination is the only thing here that, you know, people would want to use readily. But thank you very much for sending that. Zero eight one seven nine two three triple zero two. Zero eight one seven nine two three triple zero three. Zero eight one seven nine two three triple zero seven. WhatsApp is zero eight zero nine zero three zero six four one six. What do you make of the move by Josiah to globalize endoglossophobia? endoglossophobia. To you know, make it a word, an official word that eventually finds its way into the dictionary. Are you for or against? Call me and tell me. It's very important. And to more important news, Man City are still in the business of football. They have done everything right but score. They have been bombarding, <laughs> they've been bombarding Sevilla, pressing and pushing, but they have not gotten past the goalkeeper a second time. And in regular and expected fashion, but your last face looks like a depressed person. Always. <laughs> Always. Oh my goodness. This guy, this guy overthinks for the, for the love of heaven. Relax. Always. Relax. Okay. So we're counting down. How long does it take 
um, for other words, which you know people may have tried to to get adopted. Yeah. How long are we talking? Months, years? Yeah. Um. So the first thing first is that the the word should um be used. Okay. It should be an everyday word. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the first thing. And then some some suggestions say six months, some say one year. Right. Yeah, but um, but I think the most important part is just the word being out there. A lot of materials, up uh, actually materials for the word, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes a regular thing that people could just relate to. Okay. All right. So that, those are the things that um, we're looking at. So when you search. When you search on them, when you put it up on search engines, okay, people could say, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have the word, it's out there, there are a lot of materials on it. And then from that point, you could now, um, they could now start looking at it. Uh, even when you also suggest, because for uh, some of the online dictionaries, like um, um, some of these, Brit the British dictionary, the Oxford and all of that, mm -hmm. when you suggest a word, including Wikipedia, Excuse me. They will go doing their own research on that particular word yeah. uh, to see if it is if it has materials. If there are journals articles on it, if there are published um, works on it, you know. So that's that's the level we are in right now, and that's I'm trying to by his grace push this for people to get to know it and start talking about it. I shouldn't be the only one writing about it. Mm. No. Somebody could come up and look at an angle and, you know, um, write about that angle. Like, I have an article already that stay in my mind. I put up once I'm done with the one I wanted to do. Mm. And once that is done, I will now push up another article on it. And discussion should just keep, it should just keep going on about it. That's okay. It. So somebody sent a message on WhatsApp. Says, Josiah, I just saw this now. Zion from Oswaba. I think is the is the article that's already up from uh, Revelation Agents. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see that here. When you search for endoglossophobia, there are lots of results for glossophobia. Exactly. And then you have just one entry for Josiah's endoglossophobia. And then maybe you could see my uh, yeah, that's that's the one for that this thing. So okay. we need more of <clears throat> this to happen. People publish this. And um, and it's for free. Come on. Yeah. So basically, just share. Yeah, just share, publish it, and that's it. Yeah. We we'll keep talking about it. We we'll keep developing it, and keep pushing it. In conferences and what have you, you know, people get to know about it, and then discussion starts because it's when discussion starts about a particular word, mm. then the argument comes in. People begin to shape in it. People begin to look at from different angles. Okay. Is it um is, is it a global thing or is it a regional thing? Mm. So people begin to say, okay, this situation could be regional. It could happen because of these factors. Those discussions make the world popular. Right. And it goes. Okay, hold on. Are they going for penalties? Straight up penalties. Ooh, okay. All right. Endoglossophobia. What's the phobia for <laughs> <laughs> if you want a team to win and they've gone to penalties? What's, what's that phobia about? <laughs> that feeling in your gut? <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> See, guys, let me just tell you what Sammy did. Sammy, what, what Sammy is just Sammy, he just scared that Man City might lose. No, no, no. I mean, there, there's that tension. It, it happens when you, you know, you have a bias for a team. Right? Do I want Man City to win? Of course I do. Are you kidding me? That's about the other team. And I wish they never, they never pushed it to penalties. But here they are. Doing too much. Doing too much. Coming up next, we will be talking about multilingualism. Yeah. I need to take a break. I just want to play some songs. Yeah. Right? Play 